Good morning, Heartland family. Hey, How are you this morning? I want to welcome you to, if you guys want to drop your name in the, the comment section, the chat box, we would love to connect with you on yes. this journey this morning as just what, where you're watching from. So first off, I want to welcome, my name is Daniel Fields. This is my wife, Amber Fields. We serve on the communications dream team here at Heartland. It's just a beautiful journey here. It has been. So it, it is great. So, and our, you know, I want to share something with you all. You know, Pastor Darren says, you know, we don't just, when we give, we're not just giving to the church, but we're giving through the church. Yeah. And, you know, going through the growth track, you know, finding your gifts and talents and being a part of that is, yes. has been amazing. You know, I chose the path to, to continue to give and our kids give here. Yeah. You know, our daughter's on the communicate. She sings. Yes. She's on the worship team. She's on the worship team. Um, praise her yes. for that. Yes. So, yeah. but no, it's just, just coming, being a part of the church and giving through the church is, it's what's really impactful here at Heartland. Yeah. And I just can't thank Darren so much for Pastor Darren so much for that opportunity. So I know it's been awesome. Yeah. Do you know what time it is around here? Uh, it's Christmas, it's Christmas time. time. A week, oh, a little over a week away. Are you ready for Christmas? I'm no, ready. I'm not ready <laughs> He's at not all. not ready. I'm ready. Christmas around Heartland is such a special time. We have incredible services, both in person and online, for you to be a part of. Um, they start on December 22nd at 5 p.m. There's seven services. So if you want to learn more um, and to reserve your seats, please do that. Invite your friends. Invite your family. Because as mentioned, Christmas time around Heartland is such a beautiful time of year. So go to uh, heartlandchurch.com slash Christmas and learn all about the different services and uh, get your seat secured. We also are a praying church, and I can tell you right now, we are. I am going through another season of surrender, surrendering work and kids and life. Um, what's God working with you on in this season of life? You can share on our prayer wall at heartlandchurch.com slash prayer. Share with us what God's doing in your life and how we can support you and be praying for you no matter where you are, whether it's in person, whether it is online, we would love to be on that journey alongside of you. In addition to that, if you live in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to come out and hang come out on. with us. I yeah. know. Come on out. Um, there are plenty of services, three services each Sunday for you to come visit us. Um, and if you are not able to come hang out with us, there are services online, obviously. And so uh, please like us on YouTube or on Facebook um, and keep connected to us because we want to be on this journey alongside of you, helping you walk uh, and grow your relationship with God and just come to know him. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to come out and we hang are. out with us. or, or hang out. Say yeah, hi. Yeah, I know. It'd be awesome. Just, you know, let's just say... Let's join the group inside yeah, and have fun worshiping them. It's a great service, yes, guys. It is. Yep. We'll see you later.
our strength. And it's more than a feeling. It is more than a feeling. It is a weapon. So come on, let's tap into the joy of the Lord this morning. Let's worship Him together. Come on. says every victory is yours every victory belongs to Jesus and listen the battle that you are trying to fight by yourself that belongs to Jesus too so listen if you came in this building this morning weary from the fight because you've been fighting a battle by yourself I want you I want to speak this scripture over you this morning it says in our weakness he is made strong 
When we are weak, he is made strong. So this morning, as we continue to worship him, I want you guys to lift up your hands and release the battle. Release whatever you've been struggling with. And as you release it, just open your mouth and begin to worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Come on. I hear y'all this morning. Sing it out. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name it stands above them all, yeah. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name it stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, all creation.
Come on, lift up your voices and give him praise this morning. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's just give him the best praise for just about 10 seconds. Come on, just lift up your voice and tell God he's worthy. We love you, God. We praise your name. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you came to church today. I'm so glad you're here. And I will welcome you officially in just a moment, but I just want you to get in touch with this moment that we're having here today, because y'all don't need to go to church, but you need one moment in the presence of God, and that will change everything. To get in touch with the moment of God, Hebrews 12 says you've got to lay some things down, and you have to fix your eyes on something. So you got to lay down the burdens, the weights, the worries, the deep concerns. We lay those down. And then it says, fix your eyes on Jesus. And he says that to us because it's not like he went anywhere or that you don't love him or you're not a believer in him. But it's just that our eyes get fixed on the wrong things. And if your eyes get fixed on the wrong things, you won't be able to see the right things. So like he's right there, he wants to talk to you, but your eyes are fixed on the worry, on the concern, on the, on the anxieties that you feel. And I don't know what you came in here with today, but everybody came in with deep things. And if you're not careful, your eyes will, will keep going over and rehearsing the anxieties and you'll miss what God wants to say. So I love how Ephesians 4 says, don't be anxious about anything. And it makes me laugh because I go, God, I wish it was that easy. I wish it was easy to do, but then he tells us how. He tells us what to do. He says, bring those concerns, bring those worries, bring the anxieties and give them to him, pray to him and petition him. And here's the secret. He says, with thanksgiving. That's what worship is. That means you, you thank him even before you get the answer. You just, you just believe in him so much. God, I don't know what the answer is going to be, but I know you are God. And we sang it a moment ago. You know, the, the gospel is he rose and he reigns. He rose from the dead and he reigns, which means nothing I am facing is greater than, even if it's death, he, he rose and he reigns. So um, there's a part that I play in receiving the peace of God, because he says, if you do this, if you'll, if you'll bring your prayer requests with thanksgiving. Watch what he says. He says, the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard and secure your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Isn't that good, everybody? And that's what's available to you today. So we lay some things aside and we fix our eyes. And I'm going to ask John in this to sing it one more time, and I want you to lift your hands, almost like you're bringing your, your issues, your concern, your pain, your hurt to God, and say, God, here it is. And now I'm just going to thank you for a moment, because you're worthy, you're holy, you're an amazing God. And if you'll participate, I know God wants to touch your life today. Let's sing. And, and the your angels cry, come on, lift your hands, worship holy, him. Holy, creation cries. Holy, you were lifted high. Holy, holy forever. To the King of Kings, he reigns. Come on, let's keep singing. To the people sing. Holy, to the King of Kings. Holy. Come on, worship him and praise him and thank him. God, we thank you in advance for the victory. You rose, you reign, you're the king of kings, you're the Lord of lords, you're the son of God who rose from the dead. And God, all power is in your hands. You are greater than every worry, every problem, every concern. 
I thank you for the peace of God that is coming right now into our lives. I thank you that you are ministering to every heart. God, you're greater than every sickness, every cancer, every sickness of the body, every depression of the mind, every worry about a marriage, every worry about a relationship, every worry about a child. God, every lost kid, every lost relationship. God, you are the God who opens blind eyes. You're the one who causes people to see. You're the God who even raises from the dead. And we praise you today. We honor you today. We love you today. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. I pray today that you would make this service a moment of total peace. God, we rebuke the enemy, and he's the accuser who comes to steal and kill and destroy and rob our joy. But we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so today, Lord, we'll just praise you. And well, thank you. I praise you for the joy that's here. We're not ashamed to lift our hands and just declare that, Lord, you've given us a garment of praise for the spirit of every heaviness, and you've lifted us up today. God, touch your people just like you did long ago because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. See your people. Touch your people today. Heal your people today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, isn't he good? Is he a good God? He's good. He is God. And he's here. Well, I'm so glad you came. If you don't know my name, my name is Darren Chesky. I'm the pastor here, and it's my joy to welcome you, especially all of you who are here for the first time. Come on, let's welcome them today. And all of you who are online, our online church, we love you. I wish I could see you, but let me look in that camera and tell you you're important. We pray for you. We love you. Come on, welcome that online church family, everybody. We're glad you're here. I can see people are still coming in and we need every little extra seat we can get. So if you can move closer and leave an extra seat near the aisle, that'd be great. And while you're moving to do that, give somebody a high five, give them a little handshake, give them a hug, whatever, tell them welcome to Heartland. We're glad you're here. and happy Sunday. My name is Braxton and I'm excited to welcome you here today. As we continue in our time together, I'd love to take a second to update you on some exciting things going on here at Heartland. We believe you're here today on purpose, for a purpose, and we'd love to be part of your journey and get to know you better. Take a moment to fill out a connection card. You can find the card in the seat back in front of you or follow the online link in the chat. There's even a place to share how we can pray for you. If you're new to following Jesus or to Heartland, we would love to give you a free devotional book by Pastor Darren called Begin. Just bring your connection card to the welcome desk in the lobby or reach out to us at info at heartlandchurch.com. Can you believe Christmas is just a week away? This Friday evening, December 22nd, is the start of Christmas at Heartland, where we will celebrate with uniquely beautiful candlelit Christmas services all weekend long. If you haven't reserved your seat yet, do it today by going to heartlandchurch.com. At these beautiful services, we will celebrate Jesus's birth together with your favorite traditional and beloved Christmas carols, all made new again and sung by the Heartland Gospel Choir. We also look forward to closing the year out together on the following Sunday, December 31st, when we will have our normal service times at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.30 a.m. Let's finish the year strong together. Again, we're so happy that you're here and we pray God's blessing over you. Today is going to be a great day. Yes, it is. It's going to be a great day, everybody. It's not always you get a Miss Indiana actually welcoming you in the Heartland News. That was Braxton, everybody, and she's part of this church. And we're just glad that you're here today. We're so honored that you've chosen to uh, be a part of Heartland. If you're here for the first time, fill out that connection card. Uh, even if you're not here for the first time, there's a prayer request part at the bottom that you can fill out and just tell us what you're going through. If it's confidential, mark it confidential. It'll just be seen by the pastors. But if you want to have hundreds of people pray for you and your situation right now, I would encourage you to put that on that card, place it in the offering box before you leave, and we will pray over every single one because you're important to us. And you can do that online as well. There's a little electronic version of that up in the corner. 
fill that out. And if you're online, just tell us where you're uh, logging in from. Love to, love to see and to connect with you personally. Uh, Christmas is coming. It's actually our Christmas services start on Friday. I encourage you to go online and reserve some seats. They are filling up and there's plenty of room Sunday morning. We're still gonna keep our normal Sunday morning services, 8.30, 10, and 11.30. But we do that to try to hopefully spread you all out just a little bit. But I will tell you this, we've never turned anybody away from a service. So if you're kind of worried like, oh my gosh, I didn't do it. Um, just get here early. There are always people who reserve seats, but then they don't show up at that service for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know why they do that, but they do. So if you all would just uh, try to, to, to take what you need, <laughs> leave some for others. And then uh, if you're not gonna come, then turn them back in. But if you are coming, just know we will seat everybody who, uh, who plans to be here. It is gonna be amazing. This is not a professional show. This is your church family. I'm not, I'm not into the show anymore. I just want to be in the presence of God. That's really what I want. And I would love for you to hear it. Our choir though has put in the time and they have worked to produce music that we're all gonna sing to together. And there's gonna be, there's over a hundred of them and there's children involved and I can't give it all away, but it's gonna bless you. Listen, invite your families and your friends and you will never be embarrassed. I promise you they're gonna leave uh, that service uh, with their heart touched and blessed. And thank you for bringing them. All right, it's time for the offering, everybody. Time to give to the Lord. While you're getting your offering ready, um, our membership class, the Growth Track, is happening right after this service, and I'd love to meet you. It's, it's uh, a chance for you to dive a little deeper into Heartland, what we're about, and really to help you connect in a church that seems big, but it's really very small. If you find your place of ministry, of connection, you'll meet a team, and this will be a very fulfilling Experience. I don't know how long God has us together in this life. Our lives intersect for a purpose and a reason. And if he has you here and you're feeling led, I'd love to meet you. And however long God has us together, whether it's uh, a year or a few months or six years or longer, I just want to, I hope you'll say this was the, the best church experience I ever had. And uh, we want to serve you well. And we're going to open up everything in the membership class. So come on out and uh, meet us in the chapel right after this service. And then this offering, this legacy offering, is really an offering that we give really all of December. We're going to bless the, the, the city and the nation and the world. And if you'll go online uh, to the giving page, you will see in detail all of what your giving has accomplished this year. It'll make you very uh, proud in the, all the right ways. And if you dig deeper and you click the little plus signs, it'll take you into the legacy reports and you'll see the needs of what we have yet to do. And we don't have to do it, we're doing a lot, but wouldn't it be amazing if we could give the greatest offering we've ever done and do more for God? See, you know what? The, the worship of God is not just singing and praising, it's actually showing up and being the hands and feet of Jesus in very tangible ways. So we don't have missions projects, it is the mission of God for the church to go out and change the world. And I preached about this last Sunday, if you missed it, make sure you watch it, um, because I'll tell you all about our mission, why we're here, and in that message I talked about uh, a church in Dearborn, Michigan that we are helping to get start that's reaching thousands of Muslim people uh, coming to Jesus, hundreds of people being baptized. And I said, wouldn't it be great if in uh, one, one Sunday we could change their situation and get them into a building? And uh, I didn't get home uh, last Sunday and I got a text from somebody in the church that said, I got your whole 200,000. We're gonna bless that church. So we just did it in one Sunday, everybody. We're gonna bless that church and God is, there's so much more we could do. There's so many other great things. And if, if you go down that list and you see something, you, you can help the work of God go, go faster. Like, don't think of it as giving as much as you can accelerate what God wants to do in the world through your giving. So uh, go ahead and look at that. And don't ever feel pressure, but just know that you can make a difference. And the reason why that's so important is because we're the most like God when we give, because God so loved the world that he gave. And so when we give, we're like him. And that's, such, that's a good thing for your soul. All right, we're gonna pray for that. And then uh, John and the team are gonna come and sing because it is Christmas and you're gonna get a little, uh, a little preview of the hard work that these guys do to honor the name of Jesus. And I hope you're really blessed today, all right? Let's pray. God, I thank you for all that you've done for us already. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for leading us and guiding us when we didn't know what to do. But you brought us here today and we are, 
We are strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, we have put on a garment of praise. We are ready to receive from you. As we slow our, our focus down, as we fix our eyes on you, as we slow our breathing down, God, speak to us today. And God, minister through us today. We, we, we pray that you'd use this offering, the offering of our lives, the substance of our, of our work, Lord. We give it to you so that you can multiply us together to be your hands and feet in the world. And Lord, just speak to us all day long. Thank you for how you're gonna change our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together and welcome the Heartland Church music team. Amen. When was the last time something happened to you and it went different than you thought it would go? Let me, let me say it a different way. When was the last time something unexpected happened to you? A couple years ago, my wife and I, we got married. We, we stood on a stage like this and we professed our love for one another. I said, I've never met anybody like you before. The most beautiful, hardworking, talented, go-getter person I've ever met in my entire life. And she said, you are the hottest person I've ever met in the entire, I'm just kidding, she got astigmatism. Praise God for the astigmatism. And got no clue what I look like up close. We professed our love. And then we got on the plane, we went on our honeymoon. And as a young Christian couple, trying to honor God with everything we do, we were looking forward to the honeymoon. We were look, getting ready to go on vacation together for the first time. And we got to our resort and we got there real late. It was about one in the morning when we got there. And the, how many of y'all know the website and reality are totally different things? So I'm expecting peaceful, tranquil hammocks, drinks by the pool. I'm expecting stuff like that. And we walk in at one in the morning and there's a DJ up on the second floor and about 300 people just obliterated, just dancing and jump man's playing and it's just craziness. So it's already off to a bad start. And we go to the front desk and the lady behind the counter looks at me. And she says, I got good news and I got bad news, which is never what you want to hear at one in the morning, by the way. I said, well, what's the good news? And she said, well, you paid up. And so because you paid up, we secured you a room with the view that you wanted. You can see the beach. I said, well, that is good news. What's the bad news? She said, bad news is because you got here so late, we couldn't secure your bedding. I said, well, what does that mean? She said, well, what it means is like the room that I have, the only room I have left, it doesn't have a king, it has two doubles in it. 
And I did not respond that way. I tell you, after about four minutes of going back and forth, I don't, I don't cuss at people or yell at people out loud. Uh, I get sarcastic and mean. So I'm looking at this lady saying, listen, I know your job is super hard, but can you help me? Because this is the first time in my life I've never had to sleep in a bed by myself. And now I can't even do, help me, help me, please, help me. And she said, I can't do anything for you. Come back down here in the morning. And by now, Abby's so embarrassed. She's like, let's just go to the room. We'll, we'll deal with it tomorrow. I said, okay. So we go up to the room and we walk in and the room is like a crime scene. Like the maid hadn't gotten in there yet. So the beds weren't made. The carpet, how you rip a curtain in a room. I, it was ripped. There were wet spots on the floor. And I'm sitting there going, this better be the best view I've ever seen in my entire life. And I open these curtains and I look and in front of me is the pool. I did not pay for the pool, but the pool is right there. And if you stick your head out and you turn it, you can see the beach past the other building down here. I was about 15 shades of red, so angry. And my sweet wife, just trying to make the best of it, she's like, well, this spot in the carpet isn't wet. Like this is, this is good. When was the last time you experienced something that went different than you thought it would go? When was the last time you experienced something that was unexpected, where expectations were not met? Here's, here's what I know. If I got six or seven of us together and we went out to dinner and we were sitting around and we were eating and we just went around the circle, I said, tell me about a time where you've had unmet expectations. The first three or four times around the circle would be just like that. Funny stories, you know, can't believe this happened. About circle number four is where it would start to get real. And you would tell me about that job that you loved, that you thought, man, this is my career, and then I got laid off unexpectedly. Or you would tell me about the relationship that you were in that you said, I thought this was gonna be forever, and then the unexpected happened and something changed. You would tell me about the loved one that you said, man, that person's gonna be around for the next couple of decades, and then unexpectedly something happened. Come on, you would tell me about the time when the doctor said some words to you that you never wanna hear, and now you have to live in the in-between. You tell me about not even the event that happened, but the fear leading up to it. And here's what I know, and here's why I think it's opportune that we talk about expectation today. Because there's something about this time of year where everything is just amplified. So like I heard a pastor recently say, if things are good in your life, the season just amplifies how good they are. And if you're in any sort of pain or trouble, or there's something unexpected, it gets amplified as well. And I don't know how you got here, I don't know how you got watching online this morning, but I'm here to tell you this, that in the middle of the unexpected, it's where God does his best work. Amen. And today, I wanna to take us to a story that, next week we're gonna celebrate Christmas, and we're gonna look at Jesus being born. I wanna go one story before that, and I wanna look at two people that in the midst of their expectation answered the question that you and me and all of us have to answer at some point. What do you do with your unexpected? What do you do with your unexpected? Let me take you to scripture. We're gonna be in Luke chapter one. And there's this beautiful story tucked in right before the birth and arrival of Jesus about the birth of the one who would come to prepare the way for Jesus, John the Baptist. Luke chapter one, verse five, it starts this way. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. A lot of names in there. They came from really good families, both of them. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly, but they were childless. Because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Do you see the tension in here? I'm a God-honoring person that loves God with my whole life and I have unmet expectations in my life. We're serving God and I have a deep felt need. I'm serving God and there's pain that I didn't think I would ever have to walk through. Can I tell you this? It's easy as 21st century readers to read this and to feel empathy and sadness for Elizabeth, especially, come on, if infertility has ever been a part of your story before or someone you love's story, you know that is a lonely place to be. And the cultural ramifications of today was, it was actually grounds for divorce. Because if you didn't provide me a child, I could move on from you. And yet it says, look, look at the tension that we're gonna look at today. Honoring God with their lives and living in a place of deep pain 
and unmet expectations. And I don't have time to walk you through every verse today, but let me give you the cliff notes. Zechariah is a priest. And out of all of the priests, he is picked to be the priest that goes into the holies of holies, the place that you only go once a year and only one person goes, to offer incense to God. It was the greatest honor. If you were a priest, like this was your Super Bowl. Like this is a big deal. And he goes in and he's praying. And we pick up in the very next verse when it says this. Then... An angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. He knows him by name. You notice that? Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Continues, he said, your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. Not if, not maybe. She will bear you a son. And you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. Do you see all the things that are happening in this? Uh, Have you ever been to a point where you've just seen enough life that now this is just what I expect to be for the rest of my life? Zachariah is in this moment praying and the angel says, God is about to do the unexpected in your life. And let's be clear, it looks unexpected to you, but notice what he says, not just are you gonna delight in this, but many are gonna delight. This child that would be born is John the Baptist, the one who Isaiah says will be like a voice in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord. So not only are you going to be blessed, but I've been writing a story for generations. Don't miss this. Even though it seems out of your control, you didn't expect it, you wouldn't have chosen it, I've been working your story together for such a time as this. This kid you have is going to bless the nations. And it's this tremendous uh, moment of faith And I want to talk to somebody today. I don't know what you walked in here with, what unexpected you're currently dealing with. Some of you, you didn't even make it here today because you're just so in the midst of unexpected. You say, I can't even get to church today. Can I tell you this? There is a God who sees you, who knows you, who knows every detail of your life, knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows your places of great pain and hurt, and he loves you anyway. The song we just sang our hopes and our fears, he knows all of that. And God can do the unexpected in your life. And I know that when we read a story like this, can we just be totally honest? When we read a story, we go, well, good for them. That's great that God did that. But I'm living in the unexpected right now. What do I do? I I think that the miracle is amazing, but sometimes we focus on the miracle and we miss what preceded the miracle. Because notice when you go back, I want to take you back to the verse that has just, it's kept me up all week. The very first verse we read, it says this. It says, both of them were righteous in the sight of God. And they were childless. Righteous in the sight of God. You remember when we were doing the Jesus way and we talked about blessed are the righteous. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You remember what that means? Blessed are those who say, God, my entire life is yours. You can speak to any part of it. My hopes, my fears, my insecurities, my doubts, my talents, my money, everything is yours. I want my life to be about being in right standing and living with you. Like God, you can do anything you want in my life, come and do it. That's Zechariah and Elizabeth in the midst of deep unmet expectation. And they actually answer a question that you and me and all of us have to answer. When our unexpected happens, Am I going to run to God or am I going to run from God? Am I going to run to God or am I going to run from him? Am I going to run to what he has to say for me or am I going to try to handle it on my own? Because some of you are way too smart. You've been coming to church for a really long time. You say, well, I'd never run from God. Yeah, okay. And you're still trying to handle it all on your own, which is a version of running from God. So you say, well, no, am, am I going to? Run to God or run from him. Notice, two people with deep, deeply missed expectations that say, God, where else would we go? Like, God, we come to you and we want our life. Even though we don't have what we feel like we need, God, you're in control. Am I going to run to God or am I going to run from God? And what I want to do today, because I'll tell you, PD has said this before. I hate messages that give you like, hey, just believe more, but they don't actually show you how to do that. Because you know this, uh, Clay Clement, he goes to our church, he's he's one of our legacy team members. He he says it this way so well. He says, there's a huge difference between simple and easy. You know this? Like dunking a basketball is really simple. 
Uh, I will never dunk a basketball because it's incredibly hard for me at six foot on a good day to dunk a basketball. You see what I'm saying? So how do I do this? How do I run to God in the midst of my unexpected? And I want to show you just some really clear practical ways of how do we do that in the season when the unexpected comes? How do I run after God? And the first is this. And actually, before I do this, Pastor Darren taught my dad. I keep doing that. PD, my dad, whatever you want to call him. Whatever he is to you, that's what he is to me. He shared with our team this last week this teaching, and it was so good that I thought, man, not just our team, but all of us need to hear this. How do you run to God in the midst of this? And the first is we got to get some perspective. you got to get some perspective. When I say perspective, perspective of who God is, who I am, and who I'm not. Because here's the truth. When crisis hits, when pain comes, when unexpected comes, you know this. Perspective is the first thing out the door perspective of who God is and what he wants to do, my eyes go, maybe this is just me, I go so tunnel vision on the problem at hand that I totally discount any other perspective. And you need perspective. The longer you follow God, every single person is going to have a moment like Psalm 22. You know Psalm 22? A moment like this where you say, my God, my God, like why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Come on, you ever had a moment like this before? Oh cool, just me, sweet. How, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Can I, let me poke at something here real quick. There is a brand of Christianity that would tell you, don't get emotional, just have more faith. Like don't, don't get them, don't give access to those emotions and feel, have y'all ever read Psalms before? It's unhinged, go read it. It's people in deep anguish and pain pouring out their heart to God going, God, you can handle what I'm dealing with. Like you're not in heaven going like, oh, please keep that to yourself. I don't, no, 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 you wanna talk to me. And you want to hear me. My God, my God, I've, I feel like right now I've been forsaken. God, I don't even know where you are. I don't see how you could be doing anything good in this. And here's the beauty of perspective. When you read the Psalms, you see people pour out their hearts to God, and it's always accompanied by perspective. Because the very next verse after this says this, but you are holy. Do you notice the subject change? My God, why have you forsaken me? But you are holy. You are holy are enthroned on the praises of Israel's. Notice this, our fathers trusted in you. They trusted in you and you delivered them. Think of that perspective. Before I even knew you, God, you were the God of my dad. You were the God of my parents. Like people that came before me, they put their trust in you and what? They cried out and they were delivered. They trusted in you and they were not ashamed. Let me tell you the truth about perspective. Perspective doesn't fix your problems. Perspective helps you see them in the appropriate light. It actually demagnifies the problem and it magnifies my God. Amen. To go, wait, okay, wait, wait, I feel this way, but God, let me not forget the perspective that you are who you are and I am who I am. Do you see the humility that it takes in this? All year we've been talking about this idea of humility that really God blesses those who recognize their need for him. God gives perspectives to those who would recognize that he is God and they are not. That would just admit that. And, and some, listen, simple not necessarily easy. Let me give you not three tips from Nick. Let me just give you three practical questions to ask this week when it feels like the unexpected has hit you in the face again. And the first question is this, what spirit am I believing? What spirit am I believing right now? Some of you go, spirit? You mean like a ghost? Well, no, not really. Like a spirit. Like scripture says this way. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When I read that, I see that there are two choices of how I can live. Amen. I can live and follow a spirit of fear, of anxiety, of worst case scenario, of potential what ifs. Or there's another spirit that's available that's power because of the love of Christ that, that I can actually have a sound mind, that there's confidence that comes, that even though it feels out of control, I can, let, 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 me, let me go even more practical. Some of you are like, that's great, but what does that mean? Let, let me tell you how this plays out in my life. I don't actually ask this question a ton, what, what I do is, what stems it is, I hear it through my always and never language. When I hear always and never language, by the way, are language of the spiritual that point to which spirit I'm following. So think about this. How does this show up for me? It'll always be this way. They will always feel that way about you. You will always be at the level that you're at. They will always hate you. Which spirit is that being led by? Or the spirit that says, hang on, wait, my God is always faithful. 
He is always an ever-present help in a time of trouble. His promises are always yes and amen for me in my life. Do you see that? The problem is not moved. My perspective has shifted. It'll never get better. They'll never come back. This will never get resolved. You will never be smart enough. Or, man, my God promises to never leave me or never forsake me. Even if my own mother and father abandoned me, you would not abandon me. Your promises never fall short. You see this, uh, how it plays back and forth between the two. Perspective is going, hang on, what's even the self-talk that I'm talking to myself about right now? Because right now it feels so permanent, but God, you could do the unexpected. So God, would you speak to me and help me shift my perspective? Let me give you another question. Not just what spirit am I following? What are the right people in my life saying? Because some of the reason why y'all can't get perspective in the unexpected is because you're talking to people that don't have the capacity to give you the perspective of God working in your life. You have friends that they may be great people, but they don't have a heavenly perspective. So when you go to them with your pain and anguish, all they do is confirm the narrative of fear in your life. When in reality, can I just tell you this? This is why we make such a big deal about small groups. Some of y'all are still convinced that small groups are just a cool little addition that we do, or like a social club, or you mean y'all go eat food? Well, kind of, and we open the Bible, but can I tell you, you need a small group for when the unexpected comes. Forget it. You don't want to call it a small group? Call whatever you want to call it. You need somebody that when the unexpected happens can jump in the pit with you Put their arm around you and say, I'm so sorry. I'm with you. I'm for you. And can I tell you, God is with you and for you too. That can reinforce and help me with it. That's why when we get into the new year here, we're going to launch another small group semester. And some of you, come on, it's time to stop being a lone ranger. Because the unexpected doesn't care if you're alone or if you're with somebody together. And you don't want to wait till the unexpected happens to have somebody in your corner. They say, come on, let's do this together. Let me give you one more. Where have I seen God work? Where have I seen God working in my life? Notice, not just like where I saw him work one time, but where do I see God working even in and around me right now? And I can't answer you how this works, but let me just tell you for me how this works. It works through when I get into God's word and he speaks to me. And I feel like I'm reading that and I'm just reading it, but it's like the words are jumping off the page at me and I'm going, oh God, it's like like you're saying that directly to me right now. It's remembering stories of where God has been faithful and provided and shown up. And here's why I need perspective. Listen, I need perspective every day. I don't just need it when the unexpected happens, but I need it every single day because I have short-term memory problems. And you do too. Because the faithfulness of God is so hard to remember when the unexpected hits. But all I have to do is go back a little bit. I remember a time almost two years ago, we were pregnant with our youngest, Mac, And there was a hemorrhage, and the doctor said, it's either going to get worse or it's going to get better. We'll see. Wow, thank you for the comforting words in the season. What do you mean? One one or the other. And I remember we were, come on, this thing ate our lunch for a while. And I remember reading Psalm 23 in that season where it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. Not just some of it, but I have everything because of who he is. Not because of what I do, but because of who he is. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. I'm not going to fear bad news. The godly don't fear bad news. Well, I I, I circled the word shadow because I felt God speaking to me. Even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, smells like death, looks like death, stinks like death, might even sound like death, but come on, it's just a shadow because I'm walking with you. Do you see what I'm saying? When I remember that, I go, okay, Actually, it was my grandpa, Kostin. He said this to me one time. He said, listen, if you can look back on your life and get perspective and you see the fingerprints of God, you can trust that no matter what comes your way, you're in his hand. For some of us, we just need perspective to go, okay, I, I need perspective. Listen, I heard a pastor say it this way. Assume God is working in your life, even if you can't see it, and watch as your eyes get open to how he is orchestrating things. Perspective. And when I get right perspective, you know what it allows me to do? It allows me to engage with God through prayer. When the unexpected comes, what's my first response? I think for many of us, prayer is a novel idea, but my first response is, okay, so what are we gonna do? Okay, who do I know? Okay, yeah, the doctor's telling me this, but who's who's somebody that we know that we can go talk? Like, you see what I'm saying? Prayer is not a last resort, it is our first option. 
It's the first thing we do. And yet for so many of us, I think there's a wrong understanding of prayer and there's a reason why we don't engage with it. I'll tell you, especially when the unexpected comes, there are two ditches that you can fall into. And the first is that you treat God like he's a genie. You know what I'm talking about? Or like a Santa, better t- time of year. We don't celebrate genie, Santa, you know what I'm saying? That I've got my list of things. God, I want this, 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 this. Can I tell you, that's just bad theology. Like God doesn't work that way. Could you imagine if God gave you everything you prayed for? You would be horrible. Like you would be, you imagine if he answered all those prayers you prayed out of anger? Some of you are remembering the prayers right now. You prayed out of anger. No, no, no. He's a good God like a, like a good dad. The other ditch that we fall into is that because I know that God's not a genie or he's not Santa, then I don't want to pray that because if he doesn't give me what I want, I can't handle the disappointment of him not showing up. And I don't know which ditch you fall into, but Timothy Keller, he was a pastor that passed away recently. He said it this way. He said, prayer in the unexpected only works when we have this view of prayer as communing father to child, father to son, father to daughter. Because if, listen, both of those approaches, you treat God like you're the employee and he's the employer. And here's how you hear that played out. God, if you want to pray, or if you, if you want to heal him, if it's in your will, you do it. But, and do you see that even the backing out of that when, when you do that? When a dad to a father, the son approaches confidently and with boldness, like he's not actually interrupting the dad, that the kid, the dad wants to hear from the kid. Let me tell you, I have a three-year-old, and every day, the thing that I hear more than anything in the entire world is this. Uh, hey, dad, can I tell you something? Hey, dad, can I tell you something? Hey, dad, can I, can I tell you something? And at first, it's kind of annoying, because like, just tell me. Like, I don't care. Like, tell me. What do you, can, dad, can I tell you something? I, I hurt my knee. Oh, I'm sorry. I need a Band-Aid. No, you don't. It's not bleeding. I need a Band-Aid. You know, like it's, Dad, I'm hungry. I need a snack. Dad, can we go jump on the trampoline? Dad, can we? And he's just constant. It's like we, we joke that when he wakes up, it's just motor mouth, like all the time. And can I tell you, as a dad, what he's communicating to me is, Dad, I need you. Like, Dad, I'm dependent on you. Actually, I love the way Tim Keller, who we were just talking about, says it this way. He says, prayer, when all said and done, Throw that, throw that quote up there for me. Maybe we have it. Yeah, in short, God will either give us what we ask for or give us what we would have asked for if he knew everything about us. That's not the quote, but that's a good quote. Go to the next quote for me. Ready? I just read it like it was. There it is. The Christmas miracle. It's probably my fault. I got out of order. Okay, to pray is to accept that we are and always will be wholly dependent on God for everything. For everything. Think about this. When my kid comes to me and he asks me for something, he's not asking out of it. That would be cool. He's going, no, dad, I I need this from you. And sometimes the requests he asks me for are super immature. Like he asked me for a motorcycle last week. Um, You can't even read a real bike, big dog. Like, no, I can't give you a, I can't give you that. And as a good dad, I know what he needs and what he doesn't. That quote that was a quote before, when you pray to God, he'll either give you what you ask for or He'll give you what you would have asked for if you could see everything the way that he sees it. That, hey, you may not understand it, but if you just get close to me, you'd understand that I'm the one that holds this all together. So even the thing that you're stressed about, I can work all things together for good. That I'm doing something through it. We get perspective. How do I run to God? I get perspective. I engage him through prayer, just honestly. And the last one is this, that I I praise him. What we just talked about at the beginning of the service, come on, when I praise God, things begin to change in my life. And can I tell you, this is going to be a choice. Because if you've ever gone through the unexpected before, when life seems crazy, your first natural instinct is not going to be to praise God. It's going to be to try to fix it on your own. And when you praise, I can't explain it, I wish I could. Things change. And let's be clear, things may not change in the physical, but things change inside of you. One of my favorites right now is Psalm 42, and it says it this way. And maybe you can relate to this. Why am I discouraged? Like, why is my heart so sad? Maybe you've been there. I don't even know why I'm upset, but, but I just am. God, but look at the choice. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. I'll praise him again and again and again and again. I've learned this. My parents taught me this, that I don't have to see the outcome to praise God in advance for what he's doing that I can praise him. 
And I promise you, when you do it, Scripture says, listen, in the midst of the unexpected, when life seems crazy, when you feel heavy, put on, for a spirit of heaviness, put on a garment of praise. Because I magnify my God and I go, God, I don't understand it. I don't explain it. But it's the songs we sing up here. So I just throw my hands up again and I praise you again and again. Because God, it's all I've got. Right now, I don't see all the pictures, but I run to you because you do. And you get it. Oh, you've orchestrated every step along the way. I come to you. When we sing, God, your goodness and your mercy have been running after me. Can I tell you this? It may not feel like that in the moment. But when I do, I'm reminded that, no, that may be true, even though I don't feel it. God, your goodness and mercy is running after me all the days of my life. And when I get perspective and, come on, I pray and I engage God through prayer and I praise him. I'm going to give you an extra P just because. You ready for this? It's peace. Because look what Philippians 4 says. It says it this way. It's so good. It says, be anxious for nothing. Do you see the perspective shift? Like right now you're anxious, but come on, turn your eyes and climb higher. Turn your eyes. In everything, through prayer and supplication, like pouring your requests out to God, with thanksgiving, with the sound of praise, come on, with thanksgiving on my lips, make your requests known to God and watch what happens. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, like, you know what that means? That in the unexpected, you're doing better than you should be doing. Watch as it guards your heart and your minds through Christ Jesus. Notice that peace is not a byproduct of peaceful situations. Peace is a byproduct of my God reigns above it all. And he is holding everything together in his hands. And I know for somebody to tell you, say, Nick, this is really good, but I, I promise you this, put God to the test on this. It says in scripture, it says, God is close to the brokenhearted. You know what that means? When your heart is breaking, God is right there next to you. Come on, shift your perspective. Come on, come engage with me. And just praise in advance and say, okay, God, I don't see it. I don't see how you're going to work this together for good, but I trust that you will. And I promise that peace watches you do better than you should be doing right now. I want to pray for somebody today in the room that would say, I need peace for the days that I'm living in. Would you pray with me? Father God, I thank you. And God, ultimately, I thank you for your peace. God, I thank you that you don't just promise us eternal life, but you promise us life abundant right here, right now. And God, I thank you that it doesn't come through anything other than just being in relationship with you. And so God, I pray against the spirit of heaviness in this room today. God, I don't need to know the stories, but you do. You know every place of insecurity and pain and unmet expectation. And God, I pray right now through your Holy Spirit that you would touch every single person in this place, every person watching online right now. And today, if that's you, you say, listen, I, I know that I've not been running to God, I've been running from God. God has been waiting for you this whole time. And if that's you, and today you say, I need to take a step with Jesus, I need to invite him into my life, I wanna to run towards him. If that's you, just say these words with me, pray this, say, Jesus, God, I need you. God, I'm sorry for doing things my own way. But I thank you for coming and dying for me. And so today, I ask that you would come into my life. Come on, all across this room right now, with heads bowed and eyes closed. If that's you and you're praying that prayer with me today, come on, raise your hand. I want to pray for you right now across this room. Yeah, in the back, all across, up top, beautiful. Come on, say these words with me. Say, Jesus, I give you my whole life. You can have every part of it. Come in and do what only you can do. Father, I thank you for every person that prayed that prayer. And God, I pray right now that you would overwhelm them with your peace. God, would they come to know you? God, would they see you as working in their life? And would you do what only you can do? We love you, Father. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we all said together, amen. Amen, amen. Hey, real quick, before you move, everybody look right up here at me. Church family, I pray we pray that this Christmas season you would experience the peace of Christ, that he would guard your heart, that he would guard your mind, that you would experience him afresh maybe for the very first time. I promise you this, it's gonna be the best Christmas that you've ever experienced here at Heartland. Come, bring some people with you, experience the joy. We love you guys, we'll see you on Friday for the Christmas Eve services.